Alright, in this video I'll be showing you guys how to code data in SPSS using an example of liquid scale questions, which is pretty much the you know, five point or seven point scale with the labels usually as strongly agree to strongly disagree with agree neutral and disagree in between them. So that's pretty much a continuum of feeling and the strength of that feeling or level of agreement for that statement. So in this example, I'll be using the hypothetical survey statement question of I like the Social Science Club YouTube channel and I'll be using a five point liquid scale, which as I said is first strongly agree, secondly agree, third neutral, fourth disagree and five strongly disagree and the respondent would choose the answer one answer which they feel is mostly is most accurately representing their beliefs or opinion so if I was to enter this in SPSS let's just hypothetically say that I sent this out to 10 participants and they all finished the survey com completed it fully and I can use the data. So in SPSS I'll have in one column something that represents each, each participant in the survey and I'll, you can also weigh the data but for now I'll just be using one row for each participant that answered. So one, it's going to type 1 to 10 in this column. Each numeral will be representing one participant. And then let's randomly say that participant 1 answered the question as neutral, participant 2 answered it as disagree. As you can see, I'm, I'm using the same numerals that represent the numbers here. So it doesn't really matter in which order you represent them, it could be just by starting from strongly agree and going down to one as strongly disagree, but as long as you keep them consistent with direction that you would like them to go. So either from 1 being the maximum or the polar opposite of one option and 5 being the other polar opposite. You can also reverse code the data but I'll show that later. So carrying on I'm just going to randomly assign all of these participants a code or a response based on that statement and the Likert scales answers available. So now, now we have <coughs> so now we have all the data entered into SPSS but while we know what these numbers represent SPSS does not and also when it conducts the output you won't really know what the hell is going on. So now we go to the variable view tab on the bottom left hand side of SPSS screen and you can change what the numerals or what those numbers represent here as well as giving it some other variables and attributes such as the name, the type of data and the width pretty much means how many numerals you can fit into one column and decimals, decimal places for the numbers you can change it, it doesn't really matter if they point zero zero or just two for example but it's really up to you if you want it to look neater or not and then label this is what this is a column that is the variable that we will be using in this tutorial values as well missing if you have missing data columns pretty self explanatory and then alignment and measure it's either scale ordinal or nominal and then also depending on the type of data that you use, that's what your measure would be. And then the role that this data would play in the in the analysis. So it can either be the input, the target, or both the input and the target. It can play no role, it can be a partition or a split of some previous data. For now, they will just be inputs. So for the first column, remember this represents the 
participant number who answered the or responded to the statement on the survey or questionnaire. And you'll probably want to like somehow code the survey number with the number that represents it on the SPSS dataset or somehow be able to tell which one belongs to which data entry and which belongs to which survey. Otherwise you might kind of get them muddled up. If it's such a small survey, like just 10 people, you can easily just write one to 10 on each survey and then represent that in the SPSS input. So to get this column to be named in the participants so you can distinguish it between other variables, which becomes more of an issue when you have hundreds of columns of data. You just type it in the name variable column in the variable view. But you must also realize that you can't have spaces or any other type of non-numerical or alphabetical data or inputs. Otherwise, it will just give you an error. That's just that. Contains an illegal character. And then for the second column in our data set, that would be the answer. Yeah, answer would be fine. So to actually code the data, you simply go to values of the variable that you want to code. And because it's, a, it's the answers to this statement, I'll pretty much want these the numbers that we enter to represent these answers here. So we would go to answers, variables, and because one, the answer one is strongly disagree, we want to put one here. The value one is the equivalent to strongly agree. And then you go add. And then the numerical number of two represents agree. So we want that to be the same here. So we add it. And then so on. Three, neutral. Four, disagree. And five, strongly disagree. And if you somehow made a typo, you can simply go click on it here and then neutral one, change, and then it's changed here. But I didn't mean to really do that. Then we go OK. And now, as you can see, it's changed here. So participant one, answer neutral. Participant two, answered disagree. Participant three, answered neutral. Participant four, answered strongly agree, and so on. now you can also have as th this is now label form but you can also have a number form by clicking on this value labels button up top here so you can see those numbers represent these labels and these labels represent those numbers just like in the survey here and then you can start doing your statistical analyses. And that's it for the coding video. I hope it was useful. And if it was, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks.